most of the major messengers and prophets have actually set their foot on. And there's nothing greater to say than that. Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam, Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam, Sayyidina Ishaq alayhi salam, Sayyidina Ma alayhi salam, Dawud alayhi salam, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam, because he went to Mi'raj from there. It was the place where, you know, many prophets have tread, treaded, you know, on that land, and that, that is that is the beauty of that land, inshallah. Okay, I'm going to start now, inshallah, and from what so I'm going to delay slightly, it's completely fine. Uh, it's, it's something you can find to delay slightly, it's a one-off, so please, I know I'm not going to come here about 4.07, but we're going to try and go to about 4.25, maximum 4.30, we'll start our salah, inshallah. So, usually we do this in Ramadan anyway, but as a one-off, we can do it, inshallah. Okay. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim alhamdulillahi wa ta'amim wa salatu wa salamu ala sayyidina wa nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa ta'amim A'udhu billahi min shaitan ar-Rajim Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Allahumu al-Samawati wal-Arab Mathal nurihi kamishnatin fiha al-Islah Al-Islah fi zujada Al-Zujada tu ka'annaha kawkabu But if that mirror is nice and clean, you see your image very clearly. 
If that image that you're seeing in the mirror, the mirror has got a spot on it or a dent in it or it's got some, you know, uh, some part of the, the, the mirror, the silver part behind the actual glass is has sort of worn off, then you don't see a clear image there. If the bathroom has steamed up, the bathroom has steamed up, then you don't see yourself in there. And that's quite clear because the mirror can only reflect what it has. The mirror will give you no reflection if you've got if it's all covered with smudges and it's covered with darkness and it's covered with all these you know uh, marks on it. Now, if you clean the mirror, you'll see yourself. If you don't, you won't see yourself. Exactly the same way, the heart is clean normally. When Allah created us, He created a clean heart. When I sin, when you sin, we get a black dot on it. Now the heart has got some blackness on it, which means the reception of the Quran, the reception of you know Allah's name, the reception of haq and the truth, the reception of feeling you know feeling uh, a, a the feeling of some goosebumps. You get this when you when you read the Quran. Sometimes when the Quran recites, sometimes you get goosebumps. Why? Because you've got a cleanliness in your heart, and that receptive mode of the heart gets becomes non-functioning. It won't function properly. If you have put sins onto the heart, it's the sins that smudge and bury the heart from receiving all of this. We have three channels to get to the heart. Three channels. Channel number one, eyesight. Channel number two, hearing. Channel number three, speaking. When you see only halal, when you hear only halal, when you speak only halal, you, you're cleaning up the heart. Because each time the, the angel will start with a white dot, white dot, white dot, until it will go completely white. It's clean as anything. And when you start to listen to haram, see haram, or talk haram, or do any other haram deed, then the, then the heart will slowly start to have blackness until it becomes rusty. Allah has said in the Holy Quran, in Surah Mutafifin, He has said, Kalla bal wana ala qulubihim. Allah has said there's rust on the house. And who did he speak about? He spoke about the merchants who were scamming one another. When they were scamming one another, Allah said, Allah said, there's no other reason. The reason why they're scamming people is because they've got rust on their heart. If you've ever wondered why a Muslim prays or why a Muslim is a Muslim and still, you know, does, you know, still cheats people or still lies or still is cruel to people, it is because their heart is not that receptive. Now, there are others who will turn it the other way around. You can take it to make it purely clean, and I'll tell you that in a little while. But if the rust is there, and you don't clean the rust, and if, if it starts to become more and more, more and more dark you know, spots are put onto the heart, then it starts to become slow, it starts to become hard, which means that you can't actually hear the truth. When you hear the truth, you can't see the truth and understand it the way you're supposed to be understood. And you can't, you know, accept it. Your heart doesn't accept it. There's a, there's, a, there's a dysfunction of the heart that starts to take place. And to the extent that some people, la ilaha illallah, they have the heart blocked up. If you stay away from Allah, if you stay away from the masjids, if you stay away from Quran, if you stay away from the dhikr of Allah, if you stay away from the, the salihin, the, the, the pious people. If your whole life evolves around people who are not close to Allah, then you know, you'll find that your heart will get completely blocked. Completely blocked. To the extent that people even lose iman. How do you think they lose iman? They don't just lose iman like that. They lose iman over time. And Allah has said in the Holy Quran, He has said what? To, to such people, He said, Summum bukmum umum. Allah has said, they are, you know, deaf, dumb, and blind. Why? And Allah said, for whom I have they won't come back. Why has Allah said that? Because it's their own fault. Allah said, Khatam Allah ala qulubihim, he has sealed the hearts. And Allah has, you know, sealed the ears. Wa ala sam'ihim, sealed the, the ears. Wa ala absarihim, gishawra. And on their, on their actual eyes, there's a veil there. And it's because of their sins, because of what they've done wrong. And Allah says, Whether you actually warn them or don't warn them, you will find that they are the same. It doesn't affect them any, anymore of what you're saying to them. Why? 
Because the heart is the one that receives all of it. My brothers, my sisters, I want to tell you that if you ever see somebody, like people have said this to me throughout this talk, okay, we've done this talk in, in, in four different places, and this is the fourth one. And people come up to them and say, how do, I get, how do I get my husband to pray? How do I get my children to start you know, listen to Allah? How do I do this? The simple thing is, look, if you're going to come home and if you're going to start saying, you know, pray, pray, otherwise the Jahannam, pray, otherwise there's going to be hellfire. I mean, who wants to hear that? Tell me. Who wants to hear that? Hey, no, what's not going to do? I mean, we've heard this all our lives. Who wants to hear that? Who wants to get on the prayer mat because, you know, there's going to be a, a threat that's coming, uh, you know, your way and you better avert the threat, the threat by praying. No one wants to hear that. And even if you tell people, look, pray, you've got to pray, it's fun, it's obligatory, it's your iman, it's, it doesn't register with such people. I tell you what registers. You've got to reach the heart first. If you can reach the heart, you reach the body. Straight up. If you want to make somebody stop taking drugs, you're going to reach the heart. You can't just make them stop. stop them. Sometimes you can make them stop with other ways. But if you reach the heart, you've got the person. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has even told us, that there's a piece of flesh in your body, that when, it erect, when, when, it's, when it's rectified, when it's rectified, then the whole of the body will be rectified. And when it's spoiled, the whole body will be spoiled. If I pass it up, yes, the whole body will be spoiled. Nobody lies because they just want to lie. No, the heart is corrupt. If you can make your family member or you make yourself live and make the heart come alive, then subhanAllah, then you've made the body come alive. The salah will come automatically. The, the ita'a, the obedience of Allah, the obedience of the Messenger will come automatically. You know, people will start to like this person. Why? Because his heart's not functioning. The, the rust and the hardness is gone. It's been wiped away. Why? How do you reach a person's heart? But I'm going to tell you this, and one of the ways you can reach a, you know, a person who's not praying in your household, a person you want to get, get through to, is what? Start talking about things of the afterlife. Talk about Jannah. Talk about, you know, pleasure of Allah. Talk about Rasulullah and how beautiful he was and how wonderful he was. Talk about, you know, good things about him and good things the person wants to hear. Talk about Allah's arsh and how you can get, you know, how you can get under there if you have seven qualities. Then you get one of those qualities will lead you under Allah's house. Do you know what is under Allah's house? All the prophets are going to be there. People are going to have a wonderful meal there. No, these are positive ways of calling people. I don't understand why, you know, we have to always go down and say, hey, yeah, get practicing right now. Right? You get practicing right now and be like me. I don't smile. <laughs> I don't laugh. I better not see you laugh as well. Because he's serious. I'm calm, please. Break, break, you know. Okay, the serious time for serious moments, right? But please, take it easy on these people. Call them slowly. Get to the heart. Some people have tried, you know, numerous ways. But one of the things that hits a person is talk about Allah. Talk about the greatness of Allah. Talk about the Akhir. And in there somewhere say, after saying Jannah, say, well, there's also Jahannam as well. Yes, it's a beautiful way of, of bringing it. In the, in the Allah's heart, you talk about Allah's heart and the shade of the day, judgment and people. And, and when you say that, well, say, well, uh, there's also people outside the shade who are going to be under the sun, burning under the sun. You know, in there somewhere you're going to sleep it in. But you do both. But you do it gently. You talk about Allah, talk about His greatness, talk about ayats. You know, Allah says in the Holy Quran, in Surah An-Nisa, Ayah number 147, he says, Why would Allah want to punish you if you show thanks and if you believe? And Allah is much appreciative of the things that you do, and Allah knows everything that you do. SubhanAllah, what a wonderful ayah to start off with. And then later on somewhere you can drop the other ayah in, in Surah Muddathir that says, Ma salakakum fi saqar, what led you to hellfire? They say, qalu lannakum min al-musalli, we never used to offer our salah in, in, in the world. You see, you got to bring the positives first and then slowly drop the negative somewhere, fine, because you need both. If you give somebody just positive, 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 he's going to say, hey, this is not my surah, but I'm not doing it. He's going to say, I don't need to pray anymore. I don't need to pray anymore because Allah is so good. Allah is so wonderful, Jannah is there, and I'm just going to do a few things together. No, that's not the point. The thing is, my friends, if you find your heart is getting clogged up or has got clogged up, how do you make it what it was? 
Well, our Prophet has told us that everything has got a detergent. And the detergent of the heart is dhikrullah. It is the remembrance of Allah. If you want to clean the heart, it's a hadith in Timili. If you want to clean the heart, you have to clean with the dhikr of Allah. Now, I'm going to now ask you, if I, if I, what is dhikr? Can anyone tell me what is dhikr? Anybody want? What is dhikr? They said remembrance of Allah is not. Zikr is not the remembrance of Allah. Anything that reminds you of Allah. No, that's not the answer. I like the answer, but it's not. Zikr in Arabic, if anybody has studied Arabic, the word zikr means remembrance. Zikrullah means remembrance of Allah. And I know in the religion, some of you say, do you zikr or I'm going to do zikr. We shorten it. The real one supposed to be zikrullah. Now, what's zikr? There is remembrance and everybody is in remembrance at every single moment. You could be remembering anything. There are some people who are praying, okay, they're doing the salah, and they are doing dhikr of asma. <laughs> there, are, there are seriously people like that. There are some people in the salah and they are doing dhikr of the washing machine. <laughs> How many cycles left? How many minutes left? Because I need to pick my kids up at 3 o'clock. I need to leave the house, get parking, go and do all of that because if I don't get there early, the parking is going to be gone. Then I'm going to have to push the pram with the other two little ones I've got a bit further and it's going to be tiring. Yeah? At the same time, you're saying, Subhanallah, this one, this one, this one. That's, that's it. Now, you're in Salah, but you're in this of what? Of pram, of children. You're in, you're, you're in Salah and you're in Dhikr of something else. Don't you claim that you're in Dhikr of Allah. No, you're in Dhikr of whatever it is. Some people, they get up in the morning and the and they're Dhikr all day is money, 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 money. That's all they Dhikr all day. Pound, 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 pence, share, share, stock, stocks, market, market, market. That's all day on their head is people with money and dunya. That's, that's, that's the Dhikr. They're doing Dhikr. Nobody is without Dhikr. Nobody should have zikr. But only a few are lucky to be doing the zikr of Allah. Now, what I want to say to you, now that you've understood the difference, if in your ibadah, in your worship, you put the real zikr, which is the real thinking of Allah, then you make a process of cleaning the heart. And if you're not able to do that, you don't clean the heart. You get a reward for it, but you won't clean the heart. Now, let me explain this. There are three forms of zikr. Many scholars in the past have said this. Three forms of zikr. Okay? The lowest form, and I'm going to make you understand this. If you're going to take anything from my talk, you're going to take this today. The lowest form of zikr is when your tongue does the zikr of Allah, but, and so your tongue is present, but the mind is absent. Okay? For this, you get reward but you don't clean your heart. There's no cleansing of the heart. Okay, so let me give you an example, right? A person might be doing, you know, his tasbih, even, you know, say subhanahu wa ta'ala, but his mind is somewhere else. His mind is wandering around to the wallpapers in his house. Hey, friend, the one like Subhanallah, subhanallah. That little crack there, that needs to He's doing dhikr of the crack. He's not doing dhikr of Allah. So you, can, you can do all of that. You get a reward for it because your tongue says subhanallah. Because you look at the crack and say subhanallah, subhanallah, subhanallah. So you do, your, your tongue is moving, so you get a reward for it. But your mind is not present, so you don't get the cleansing done. Okay? So that's the lowest form of dhikr. There's one that is in, in between. It's, it's, it's higher than this, which is your mind is present, your tongue is absent, okay? With this, you get reward and you also clean the heart. Okay, let me give you an example. If somebody sits here, or sits anywhere, and they're just thinking about the wonderful, wondrous nature of Allah. Wonderful nature of Allah. I often do this sometimes, let's just say, for, I'll give you an example. If I'm cutting a pomegranate, have you cut a pomegranate? Anar, the anar, I sometimes do it. You must ask me that. Have you ever cut a pomegranate? Have you ever cut a pomegranate? Yeah? It's beautiful. It's beautiful. You take the pomegranate and you take a, you 
take a knife yeah, and you cut and you think subhanallah that color the colors inside the pomegranate the beautiful redness the juice that comes out the wonderful way Allah put every pomegranate piece inside there next to one another like pearls that are coming out okay just for you my friend and when you look at that you think the smile Allah said the whole Quran Gumman he said no, look at the pomegranate and he said ila tamari ila wa Allah said look at the fruit when it becomes when it, when it starts to grow and when it becomes ripe so when you cut it, subhanAllah, there is something wonderful. Now, my mind is thinking of Allah. My tongue is not saying anything. I am in the dhikr of Allah. I'm thinking, wow. I'm thinking, subhanAllah, but I'm not saying subhanAllah. I'm thinking, wow, in my head, how great you are, Allah, but my tongue is not saying Allahu Akbar. All right? So I am doing dhikr of Allah. I'm getting reward, and my heart is being cleaned right now. It's being cleaned right now when I do this. Okay, so what's the lowest form of the tongue? The tongue is? The tongue is present, but the mind is absent. You get, what do you get? Come on guys, you get reward, but you don't get? The needs of the heart. Okay, what's the one above that? The tongue is absent, the mind is present. You get reward and you get cleaning of the heart. Good. Now the top one, this is the best one. When the tongue and mind both are present with Allah Azza wa Jal at the same time. This is the one you get the most reward for, and this is the one that seriously cleans your heart. The more you think of Allah, the more deeper you are in the remembrance of Allah, the more you are cleaning your heart. And this is the best one, and this is across all your ibadah. Let me give you an example. So somebody is, you know, somebody could be, Look at the Quran and then read the Quran. You know the best way to read the Quran is, is to read to Allah. Do you realize, you know, Mullah Fadl Rahim, Rahimullah is actually from, from all the Rahimah. May Allah give him Jannah and Firdaus. Say Ameen. One of my best friends. Say Ameen. Come on, let me sit in here. It's your, 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 your own city chef. Anyway, one of the things said to me once, he said, do you know why Allah revealed the Quran the way He revealed it? And He started off by saying, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar Rahman Rahim Malik. He said, Do you know why Allah started that? Instead of saying, instead of saying, uh, uh, Qulu, uh, instead of Allah saying, uh, ana, ana, ana I am the one who's praised, I created the heavens and the earth. Instead of Allah starting the Quran with that, why did He start it with all praise due to Allah, the Lord of the world, uh, the most merciful, the most kind, uh, master of the dead? You know why? Because Allah revealed His words, He revealed His words to His servants, and He wanted His servants to repeat those words back to Him. So He put it in a language that would be from them to Him. And he loves it when you recite the Quran. So when you recite the Quran, it's for him. So you're supposed to sit there. And honestly, one of the best things you can do is recite the Quran at Fajr time because Allah has said Mashhuda in Surah Isra. He has said that time the angels are witnessing your recitation of the Quran. Usaid bin Hudayr radiallahu anhu was in his barn in Medina. He had his horse there. He started to recite the Quran. And as he was reciting the Quran, his horse started to lift up the front two legs. And Hussein got scared, or the Allah he got scared. So he stopped. His horse stopped. Then he started to read again, and his horse got unsettled again. So he stopped again. Then he started again, and he saw a canopy of lights coming toward the barn. They even came inside the barn. And as they came in, the horse was, you know, lifting his forelegs up and up. And he stopped, and he was scared, and the lights went away. He went to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and said, Messenger of Allah, this is what I saw at Fajr time. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Oh, Hussein, those were the angels from the heavens. And had you continued to recite, the people of Medina would have seen the angels and they would have met the angels. And that's one incident that happened, that's it. Why did Allah reveal this to say of the Allah? Because he's trying to show us that when you recite the Quran at Fajr time, when Fajr is still, still there, the angels are there and they will come in their hundreds to receive, just to listen to you. And the other best time is the Hajj time. 
If you, the best time is Tahajjud, if not Fajr time, it's wonderful. And if you sit there and you recite the Quran just to Allah, okay, it's the cleansing of the heart. You will feel vibrations going through your body. You just sit there and you just recite. <laughs> Mesmerizing people. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. There are some people that really read really that. Oh my God, I find him there. <laughs> His kid is crying. 
Kuru Kasi Nani. He's supposed to pick him up, but he never did. No, no, no. I've never given him to any soap in the streets for anything for games. And you know what he's done? My kids don't soak. <laughs> if something doesn't work, how long are you going to soak? If you ever give him to salting, you'll finish. Because the salting will get longer and longer and longer. Right? So my kids don't salt. Alhamdulillah. If they want something, they tell them straight up. And if I say you're not going to have it, it's like, oh. <laughs> that's, that's what happens in my house. They just walk off. Alhamdulillah. They might come again after a few minutes and say, uh, can you play now? I said, no, you can't. <laughs> straight up. Alhamdulillah. That's it. Well, why are you always eh, 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 eh. Oh my God, and then I get parents telling me, you know, show God, you know, I'll come and go right, I'll look at my God, come in my house and talk to my kids, you know, they be, why are you giving into something? Anyway, some Muslims, they soak with Allah. Allah didn't answer your dua, you're soaking. You're saying, oh, I did a dua, I never got accepted. I went again and I did a dua, you're soaking, soak, soak, soaking. If Allah doesn't want to give you something, there's a reason why He doesn't want to give it to you. And He doesn't have to give it to you. Yes, we're going to ask Him again and again. That's fine. And when He wants to give it, He'll give it or He'll give something else in return. But maybe, you know, I may not understand, but I shouldn't soak. I should say, oh Allah, I'm going to make my dua again. It's fine. You, you, you've got the right to do that. Only in the Akhirah will find out whether it's, it's accepted or not. Anyway, three forms of dhikr. The bottom one, the tongue is... Forgetting, man. Come on, everyone together. The bottom thicker. The tongue is present. present. The mind is absent. The one heart, and for that you get what? You get reward, but you don't get blessing of the heart. The next one up, what is it? The tongue is absent. The mind is present. You get reward and you get cleansing of the heart. The next one above the highest one is what? You have both present, you get the highest amount of reward, and you get, you get subhanAllah, it will clean your heart. Now when your heart starts to get cleansed, you will find an attachment to Allah. It will happen automatically. It will happen and you will feel it getting stronger and stronger and stronger. At first when you do dhikr, or you recite the Quran, or you do your tilawah, or you're in your salah, or you're doing your dua, or anything else, or tasbih, whatever it is, at first, it, the sweetness comes and goes. But later on, the sweetness will increase and increase because your heart's getting cleaned now. Okay, your heart's getting clean. Can I ask for the time this time? Ten past six. Ten, ten past six? Ten past six. <laughs> 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 it's time time, man. It's time time, <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to give you a demonstration of certain adhkars and dhikr. And you can, go, you can do these adhkars, you can do whatever you want, however you want. It's up to you. It's up to you how you do it. But when you do it, you'll find that there's a cleanliness that happens. Over time, you'll find it. You need a dose of it every day. You need doses at different times. Don't try and take that. If a, if a doctor says to you, that you need to go for two weeks antibiotics. Yeah, two weeks, he gives you a whole, whole you know, medicines or, you know, uh, packet, whatever it is, with capsules in it, and, and you take the packet home, you open it up, and it's got 24 tablets to be taken maybe over two weeks, and you say, that's a lot of tablets, man, you know what, over two weeks, I'm uh, holding a look there. Let me eat all of them together right now. Right? So you take all of them, all, all of the items together. If you take all of them, you know, you can end up somewhere else, though. Okay? Some hospital, you're going to have to pump it out of you, okay? Now the thing is, with zikr or with, with this remembrance of Allah, you, you know, you want to put it dose by dose at different times, at different moments. And that's why Allah said five daily prayers not together, He said spread out. That's why Allah has really told us, you know, remember Allah in the morning and in the evening. That's why after the Salah, Prophet said, now remember Allah a little bit. Fa'idah farab tafansa, fa'idah rabbika farqa. When you finish your prayers, then spend a little bit more time remembering Allah. That's why we have nafal salah, we have sunnah salah at different times of the day. Why? Because it's doses, doses throughout the day. That's why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had his ad'iyah and his du'a to say in coming out of the house, you know, traveling, whatever it was, doses were given. Okay, and we need these doses daily. And you can enjoy the dunya and you can enjoy the akhirah. Alhamdulillah, you've got best of both worlds. But you can do this and you can say, Allah, 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 you can say, La ilaha illa Allah, 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 La ilaha ill
No, 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 no. You can do that. You can do that. And you might turn, you know, those off, you might not you know, enjoy it as much, right? But you can put some sweetness into it. And the sweet flavor comes from you. Every one of you has got a sweet way of calling Allah Azza wa It's inbuilt in you. You have to explore, explore it. You have to find it. It's in you. Okay? You find your own way. Okay. Zikr is such that there's no tajweed in zikr. There's no set length. There's no such thing as you have to say this way. There's no set tune. There's no set tone or anything. You can do it how you want. And you have to explore. And when you put a sweetness inside it, you're going to enjoy it. Like for example, some guy, he was going getting, he was proposing to a sister and her name was Khadija. Okay? I'm sorry sister, your name is Khadija. I'm sure there's a few here, but there's no, nothing from me said to you, okay? Now some guy who was proposing to a sister called Khadija, before the proposal he said Khadija. Right? Khadija, that's it. And after he got married to her, he says to her, Khadija. <laughs> Khadija. Mary Khadija. Now he'll say Khadija in many different ways. Khadija. Khadija, Khadija, Khadija. Guys, by the way, it's halal to do that with your wife, okay? It's halal. And, and, and sisters as well. It's halal to do that with your husband, honestly. You don't have to say Khadija. <laughs> okay, anyway. So what happens is with Allah's name, you can put a sweetness inside. And the sweetness. You can choose whatever you want to do. I'm going to give you a demo. And the demo is not because I'm trying to start something here. You can choose your own zikr and length and whatever you want to do. So let me give you an example. You can say, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah. You can say that. Or you can say this. La You can do what you like. 
As long as you build your tune and you call Allah in your own way, and every tasbih, whether it's subhanallah, alhamdulillah, Allah, Allah, la ilaha illallah, whether it's astaghfirullah, you say it from the heart, you put your mind there, you move your tongue, you're getting the cleanliness done. And when you recite the Quran, recite it by you know, thinking, it's for you, Allah. It doesn't matter if you've got a broken voice. Allah loves broken voices. Don't worry about it. You're probably thinking, well, I can't recite that. Like Don't worry about it. Because when you're fasting and your breath smells, the hadith of Bukhari says that Allah loves the smell and to him it's like musk. You know that scent musk? That's how your breath smells to Allah when you're fasting. Okay? So when your voice is broken and you're trying to recite it with a good tune but you haven't got one, don't worry. Allah understands you and He just wants you to recite to Him. And that's when plainness happens. When you're in salah, take your time. Do a salah of, you know what, I'm going to do it for you. When you do it for Allah, you do a beautiful one. You will do, you'll do a beautiful salah. Now, finally, what I'm going to say to you in the last few moments. How many minutes do you have? 470. Okay, finally, I'm going, to, I'm going to go over the ayah. Okay, the ayah that I quoted in the beginning. And about 10 minutes time, I'll finish and you can have a muffin. So please stay in your places. In 10 minutes time, you have a muffin. The ayah that I quoted in the beginning, subhanAllah al it will summarize the whole thing, a whole talk of what I'm giving. If you want to wake their dead heart up, you've got to wake it through dhikr, you've got to wake it through knowledge, okay, true knowledge, okay, if you can get true knowledge. You've got to wake it up by staying with the pious people or with people who've got better actions than you. You've got to wake it up by going through the ahadis of the Prophet You've got to wake it up through reading and understanding the Qur'an and what it's saying to you. You've got to wake it up by standing in front of Allah in Salah and just thinking about Him. You've got to wake it up through dua and so on. All these actions, wherever the mind is present and the tongue is also there, inshallah, massive, massive cleansing. Allah will do of the heart. And you will eventually feel that you are you are connected to Allah. Azawajal. Now, the ayah that I said, I'm going to recite it to you and I'm going to give you the tafsir of it. It's surah number 24, ayah number 35. It's a beautiful verse that actually explains all of what I'm saying. Okay? So listen to it, inshallah. May Allah Azawajal give us the to make our hearts like this. Allah said it. Allah is the giver of light, giver of light in the heavens and the earth. He's the only one that gives light. The example of Allah's light is like an alcove. So an alcove is a part that where the wall goes in. Okay, sometimes you know you have that kind of a you know, you know, you know, something you've got a wall that goes in and you can put something on the shelf there. That's an alcove. And in, in that alcove, Allah says, there is a lantern. What does Allah mean by this? Allah means this chest of yours is an alcove. It's got a hole inside it. And in there, you've got a lantern which is your heart. Okay? The lantern is in a glass, okay? It's in a glass, meaning your heart is clean the way Allah created it. Okay, how clean did Allah make our heart originally and how clean can we make it, Allah says. Allah says that the heart, the, 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 the glass of this lantern is such that is so clean, it looks like a shining star. Allah says that the oil of this lamp is lit, okay, from a, from an oil that is from the zaytun tree, the olive tree. But that oil is neither from the east nor the west. What does Allah mean by that? What Allah means is. The oil is the example of knowledge and action. When knowledge and action come into my heart and it touches my iman inside, then Allah said, I mean, He said, zaytuha lam As if the heart is going to light up even though the oil doesn't touch it, meaning that the iman and aman don't have to touch my heart. When, when, when my, so the, the, the knowledge, sorry, the knowledge and the actions don't have to touch my heart. 
My knowledge is somewhere else. My actions are somewhere else. But they will inflame my heart. With what? With light. There's only light of Iman inside and light of my actions. Allah says, Light upon light. Allah will guide whoever He wants to His light. Allah knows, He knows everything. Then He says, Allah says in houses where He has given permission for His name to be raised, there are men. Men in those houses that are massaging, women in their own houses or in the masjid, Allah says that they're there, they're not, they're, they're not dwindled by the commerce and the trade that is out there, their hearts are connected with Allah. They fear a day when the hearts and the, and the eyes are going to be turned over. That's what they've got their minds on. That is, Allah gave, Allah gave an example of the clean, you know, the believer that has cleaned his or her heart. When you clean it, commerce and trade in the dunya doesn't bother you. You want to think of Allah more and more. And you want to be in a dhikr of Allah all the time if you can. And the more dhikr you do, the more of a buzz you get. In fact, Abdullah bin Masood was sitting and he was doing the dhikr. And he had this slight buzzing time. You like some people sit down here. You know, they're reading something, but they've got this humming or buzzing sound, yeah? So, Sahabi came to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and said, MashaAllah, Abdullah bin Masood has this buzzing sound. And Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to Nisman, he said, Hawla dan dan He said, Around his buzzing sound, do we buzz too? Around his buzzing sound, do we buzz too? Meaning that it's completely fine to have that. You get into the dhikr of Allah and you could be in there. Subhanallah, 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 subhanallah,
say, now nah, you can say very quietly. This is the last one I'm going to give you, and we'll go for my good one and end it. Don't say quietly. Don't say really quietly. Just you, my God.